The last year and a half has been a challenging one, to say the least. A global pandemic, the resurgence of the Black Lives Matter movement, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, football almost came home, but didn't quite, and in the process revealed a racist underbelly of the society that we live in. Whoa, <laughs> that was a whole lot, right? Yeah. Core Educational Trust created Core Lot, acronym Leaders of Tomorrow in response to the social and political issues going on in the world, as a way for the students to autonomize the emotions and the feelings and directly channel it into being the change in the very society that they want to see, therefore being the leaders of tomorrow. With me, fellow Lufadeju, actor, mentor, at the helm of it all. Today, I have with me Tanaya Scala from year 11. Mm -hmm. Did I say it right? Yep. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I think it's my dyslexic brain. Yeah. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. It's great to see you here today. You know, I, I know that you guys. While. Yes. I know that you guys have left school and are coming back into it. How was it leaving school? A roller coaster of emotion. Yeah. Yeah. Because you thought you wouldn't really care, but then mm -hmm. the next day when you didn't go back in, it was like, oh, we finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean. The last time that um, you left an institution or, or a school per se would have been when you were in primary school. So that was, however, it's five years on and you've grown exponentially as a person between then and now. So how would you surmise your journey in secondary school? <laughs> Another roller coaster. Yeah, yeah. I'd say it was definitely challenging, um, but I pushed through it. Yeah. I got to where I wanted to be when I started year seven, Good. by year 11. Nice. That's my main thing, really. Yeah, yeah. Tenacity, yep. perseverance, you know, all good lessons to learn in life. I know that uh, Core Lot came as in response to the well, the Black Lives Matter movement, and I initially gave a talk um, on Skype. I don't know if you were on the... Were you, yep, during yeah, COVID, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Um, so how was that for you? I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed the opportunity. We were given team calls with lots of visitors mm -hmm. on different walks of life, and I thought it was really interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it got me really thinking about my surroundings and where I want to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where do you want to be? I want to be in the media world. Yeah. A lot of social media is coming to light. We need it for life, for mm -hmm. example, like cash society and stuff like that. So it's the way forward, I think, photography or journalism, something to do with being involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Photography. So you. Yeah. The creative aspect of you. Yeah. Yeah. Are you into, do you take a lot of pictures? Or what's your means of, photo like, you know, I know all photographers have very different avenues of. So instead of like um, nature and stuff, I prefer to be in like weddings and stuff, getting okay. the in real life shots yes. to feel the moment of what's happening. Oh, nice, 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 nice. So like, I know a lot of what we spoke about when um, we had our meetings was the last year. We spoke about the last year, the pandemic, um, its effect on your education. So talk to us more about that, like how it was, what it was like to kind of go through such, what seemed like such an important moment in your life as a, like, as cr having 11. your GCSEs, your year 11 exams, you know, the, the springboard into sixth form life, uh, like whilst in, a, in the middle of a pandemic and having to do classes on, online. What was your, I know that we spoke to you, um, I spoke to you about structure you know, creating a timetable uh, for your revision. And how was that all, navigating all of that? That advice really actually helped me. Mm -hmm. I managed to fit in the school day, yeah. have a rest, and then have an hour revision of whatever subject I wanted to do that day. Yeah. And it did really help. Yeah. It got me to the grades that I wanted it to be at. Oh, good, good, good. But as far as GCSEs, the lockdown was really up in the air. The yeah. first lockdown, I was like, what's happening? What are we going to do? Do I need to put more work and do I need to put less work and what do I need to do? And I just thought, I'm gonna do the lessons that they provide and I'm gonna see what happens. It lasted a long time. Mm -hmm. By the second lockdown, I thought, okay, I know what I need to do. I need to put my head down. I need to attend every lesson and ask for more, boost the lessons, ask for work, ask for things to be sent home. Mm -hmm. And I did. And yeah. I would have preferred to do that in the first lockdown, but I'm glad that I did it anyway. You had the growth to be yeah. able to realize what you needed. As I always say in every situation, it's like, bring in the orange for every last bit of juice that you can. Yeah. And wherever possible, articulate what you are feeling um, to the teacher. Oh, I need extra support here. I need this. You know, I remember that you said you, you found a website online 
yeah. in which you were uh, revising on and you know they allowed you to have like practice tests yeah. to be able to really like the focus maths in and English and things yeah like, put your example in and it would help you and tell you yeah, yeah like how good it was how strong it was I managed to ask them like with homework and online work I managed to like keep sending it to my teacher is this good what would you say for this would this be okay for and they will help yeah oh, that's good so that's good track. I know that you are talking to us today about social media mm -hmm. so talk to me about like how like especially with the last year I had a roller coaster of a, of a connection with social media I went through the you know the clubhouse phase yeah now, uh, what was a house party, house party. <laughs> the house party everybody on house party jumping into each and everyone's conversation um twitter i mean twitter is a, a, is a frenzy right now instagram yeah. you know like using that as a way to kind of connect to the world and and we know that obviously that has its roller coaster but what what was your connection with social media during the lockdown at the start of lockdown all the time mm -hmm. Every app, all the time, up to date notifications, all the time. Da -da 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 -da. I was always checking my phone, trying to see what was going on. Yeah. Staying up to date, so many lockdown group chats. Everyone yeah. was like, what's happening? What are we going to do? What should we talk about? Yeah. But then as time went on, it was like, OK, we spoke about this yesterday. We saw this. I did this yesterday. <laughs> the so why are we in. doing it again? So yeah. that's when I started taking breaks. I started watching more Netflix, staying away from like interacting. TikTok helped uh -huh. because I came off Snapchat and the communicating apps yeah, yeah. and I went on apps where you can just watch videos and laugh and go about your dating instead of having the negative side mm -hmm. of people getting a bit more sad about lockdown. I see. I kind of took myself away from that and went to the happy things. But did you feel like, I don't know, they said that there's a dopamine hit, hit that hits with the scrolling, yep, the yep. scrolling aspect of things. I found myself on, like, I, <laughs> I might be a little bit too old for TikTok, but I found myself on TikTok and I was like, I really liked the creativity that people could like, induce into one minute, like 60 seconds. Is it 60 seconds? Yep, yep. Some people, maybe less, um, you know, the all the dances and stuff. And I was like, oh God, like this is, this is amazing. But I found myself like one minute, 60 seconds at a time, two hours later, like, because I think you, it shock, it makes your brain think that it's a lot less than it is. But bef before you know it, you stringed together a whole load of 60 seconds and created however many hours that you've been scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Did you find the same? Like I think I would go into Snapchat and someone would post one. Yeah, yeah, so I'd yeah. go and watch it. And by the time I come off, oh, it's been two hours. Let me go back and start, find another one, go on. Jeez. So it was like a cycle, cycle, but I did like it because it was like everyone was going through similar things. And then yeah. when I was scrolling, I was thinking, OK, I can relate to that or yeah. I can look up to that. Yeah. And it was a good place to be yeah. on social media as the different apps were getting more popular. House Party had its prime. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was Club, like a yeah. quick burst, wasn't it? Clubhouse had a long prime. It was good to see everyone getting together at certain times in the day mm. to have conversations. But then that kind of died down. So TikTok lasted the longest, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, TikTok, is, they say people are saying, you know, Instagram is old yeah. and TikTok is the new kind of... I, I even find it TikTok quite informative. Mm -hmm. I've learned a lot about, like, well, I mean, there was... I feel like there was a whole massive frenzy when the kind of Israeli-Palestinian thing was really kicking off um, of people really... It being informative on, on TikTok. So TikTok is, has its... Uh, like with the Black Lives Matter thing, mm -hmm. we got to see what was happening in America before the news tabloids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to see firsthand by people in America what was going on in the marches. Yeah, yeah. And I thought that was really good like to see as fast as we could. Yeah, yeah, it's wonderful, wonderful. Talking about social media now, um, you've, you've got a speech for us today um, about social media. So yeah. let's hear it. <laughs> Hello, my name is Tanaya. And I've come here to tell you that you are a drug addict. Everybody in this room, everybody you know, and everybody yet to join us will be addicted to this drug too. It's a drug used with your elders and it's a drug you'll teach your children how to use. It's a drug that is mostly free, but its expense is greater than you could ever imagine. And to really wake you up, right now you have this device and this drug on you. The drug, if you haven't worked out already, is social media. Social media undoubtedly comes with pros like networking and staying in touch with loved ones. But the more personal side of social media is lethal. One out of four people suffer with mental health in the UK. 66% of the population have social media in the UK. Mental health never started at the prime of social media. It's been an ongoing issue we've previously faced, portrayed as a negative thing with the menacing clasp on mental asylums and so on. Every social media forum vows to help people communicate with each other and share media, but they don't mention the relentless and induced pressure it forces on you to be like anybody and everybody else. It complements perfectly with its addictive nature 
to impress others, causing people to lose sleep and become easily distracted. Due to the impulsive power we have as users, it's hard to communicate in real life social situations. Day to day etiquette has been lost. People often resort to short conversations, quick interactions, and most probably have a lack of interest anyway, walking away with no information or misunderstanding. Have you ever had a conversation with someone and not been able to engage without checking your phone? The urge to pick up your phone feels so overwhelming that you resort to unlocking your phone and checking the entire canvas for notifications. This is a relapse. Take it as you want. Social media is damaging. And when you log out and log back in, that is a relapse. A severe downside to social media is catfishing. It's really easy to impersonate other people and create a false image of not just the person you're pretending to be, but the receivers too. And this can lead to insecurities, but also more serious situations like kidnapping and sexual assault. And consumers may not feel safe leaving their house as they don't know who the person is. Often people who catfish have experienced real life trauma and have found an outlet to be liked through pretending to be somebody else instead of working on themselves. And this is a problem we as a society need to change and better the mindset of those who need help instead of judging them. Another downside to social media is trolling. It's easy for people to bully and spam others. Interestingly, platforms allow it, leaving some people damaged and feeling unsafe so they don't want to leave their homes. Trolling is something that can open up a lifetime of depression or anxiety and possibly lead to the start of catfishing and the inevitable increase of suicide rates, especially in teens and young adults. Now let's talk about the physical and social examples of withdrawal. Social withdrawal includes things such as not liking a picture or not posting a picture because you're afraid of what others might think, especially on Instagram where you can't see where your image goes. Physical withdrawal causes you to be less socially active because it's taking a toll on your day-to-day -day life. You believe that there's too much negativity spreading around and you just can't take it anymore. With withdrawal, there's a lot of thinking that goes into it. Often people are scared to delete social media because of the fear of missing out, which can cause lack of sleep and irregular eating patterns. Ordinarily, it can cause you to feel lonely and bored when without your device. But strangely enough, people would only feel lonelier because of social media. It's undoubted that we depend on the internet going forward with major changes like becoming a cashless society and the assistance social media was when we experienced a worldwide lockdown for the first time in our existence. But it does come with several opportunities to destroy mental health and even physical health. Social media is a drug, but it's not all bad. It's up to how you utilise it and how those around you utilise it. And if you limit yourself into needing it, because a relapse is never too far away from a clear mind. Well done. You did it. Why is your face like that? <laughs> <laughs> Why is your face like that? I'm great. I'm yeah? fine. Yep. Good. Well done. Well done. What an impactful speech in which you talk about social media, its pros, its cons, you know, our connection, our undoubted connection to the internet going forward um, and how we can use it as a positive change. You know, as with anything, as, <laughs> as, um, Uncle, what's his name, said to Peter Parker and yeah. Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. And that's, I feel like that was the essence of what you were saying, you know, that this social media is a great tool in which we can do so much with it, but we need to be careful in, which, in how we use it and making sure that we're balancing ourselves. Yeah, Life is about balance, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly, fantastic, fantastic. So talking about social media, <laughs> let me throw a curveball your way. Um, about the whole recent football antics and the social media, how do you feel about that, you know? The social media side of it. Yeah. <sighs> because actually, funnily enough, I was talking to a footballer, um, Aaron Leonard, who was the, uh, a player for England, maybe, uh, I might be, am I right, uh, about, was a previous player for England, let's just say that. I don't know what decade or what year he was playing, but he mentioned how in his day and age, it was just the press. The press are known, or the British press are known for not necessarily liking black football players, but he said, you know, he could compartmentalize, as in just not look at the papers, go do his job and look at it and like interact with it as and what, when he wanted to. But with this new players, it's like, it's everywhere, it's all encompassing. It's, Social media is... I think there's pros and cons to it. The pros are... No, let's see the cons. The okay. cons are 
if you have something if you have something to say you can say it mm -hmm. and they do and they don't hold back and then people support them and then it can really damage the players mm. but then the pro is there's the other side of people that disagree and try and help and support mm. there's been people sending cards and things to him yeah, yeah, yeah. and to the players and there's a pros yeah, and cons yeah, to yeah. it yeah, I mean, like with um, the George Floyd thing, social media is a huge tool in getting it across the world. You know, m millions upon millions saw that video of the officer um, on his um, kneeling on his neck, and that was the instigation for all of the social activism that happened. So it, it's positive, and it's as you say, negative, uh, and its implications on us as individuals. Um, Tanaya, what does the future look like for you? Right. Right. <laughs> so where are you going to? Um, I don't, I'm going to left. go to college to do um, media. So mm -hmm. hopefully this will be my future. Yes, very relevant. Very yeah. relevant. Oh, fantastic. Um, I'm really in love with like voice and my opinion. Mm -hmm. So radio presenting, podcasting, anything where I can speak from the heart. Yeah. I'd love it as well. Yeah. And capturing things like I've said, photography and things, being in the moment and speaking to people, that's yeah. what I really want to do. I mean, that, that's always been an engaging thing about you. From the first moment in which I met you, I feel like you were undoubtedly very vocal um, and very expressive in your true authentic thought, however uncouth that may be. And I, I don't mean as in a bad sense, I mean like just honest, direct, w whether it was direct, directed at me or not. Get what I mean? Like you just have this, honesty about you, that the information will flow regardless of um, who's in front of you. And I, I think that that's something to be admired. Um, it's, it's wonderful. How do you feel a core law has been, has been impactful in your life in the last year? It, see, it helped me see my future. Because mm -hmm. before I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I didn't know whether I wanted to do like childcare mm -hmm. or tourists. Like, and I didn't know what I wanted to do. Yeah. But this, like voicing my opinion, writing things down, planning my speech, mm -hmm. putting things towards it, asking people like, oh, do you like this? Do you think this is nice? Mm -hmm. What should I add? It's really like thought, okay, I want to do this. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah. something I need to do in my future. So I need to work towards it. It helped me change my college course as well. Yes, what courses so, are you doing? You said media? So it's a two year course, three, it's a triple diploma. I see. So it's just all media. So podcasting, radio presenting, oh, wow. um, shooting like music videos, photography, things like that. Oh, nice. That's, well, that's wonderful, wonderful. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your speech with us and uh, undoubtedly it was a very impactful one and um, one that would leave a, a lasting thought on the mind uh, which i uh, which i'm sure you intended it's wonderful thank you as you can see tonight has got a very distinct voice and one that leaves a, a lasting thought in our minds you know that's something i will um carry on ruminating on um, for the rest of the day. Um, she's part of a greater project of Core Lot in which other students share a lot of their thoughts and how they feel that they could be the leaders of tomorrow with us. And uh, be sure to check them out. Thank you.